With flags at half staff and security at full strength, the bells of Notre Dame chimed at noon as Paris paused to take in the last 24 hours. It took only five minutes for two gunmen to kill eight journalists and a police officer and others in the offices of Charlie Hebdo, a French satirical newspaper. It wasn't a random attack. Authorities believe the killers had been watching the building for some time, looking for an opportunity to strike, beginning their attack by forcing an employee to enter her code that opened a door. One facet of the attack that isn't being talked about much but must be part of any conversation, the safety of those in every and any business terrorists deem worthy of their weapons. Welcome to Midpoint, president of the TSD Security Consulting Group and former supervisory special agent in the National Security Division at FBI headquarters, Tanya DeGenova. Tanya, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Tanya, we now are at a point where I believe and I think you would agree with this as well. We have now seen an attack in broad daylight on a business. We now have to look at that not only in France, in Europe, but here in America as well. What needs to be done and how dangerous a threat do you think it is that you have terrorists like this who show no fear and aren't afraid of doing this right at somebody's workplace? Well, it's a little different situation here than in France in that we carry guns here in the United States and we've had active shooters. And in uh, the United States, for example, the FBI has um, made a concerted effort to uh, build an alliance with the private sector. And so far, in the past couple of years, the FBI, for example, through um, alliances such as InfraGuard, of which I'm a member, has trained over 30,000 people in how to prevent violence in the workplace or get prepared for an active shooter situation. In France, for example, people don't, no, citizens don't carry guns. And uh, so far, it's been a very open society. In this particular case, with uh, Charlie. Um, Hepo, uh, apparently the chief editor had received some threats uh, before, and actually they had a bombing uh, in 2011. So he had two bodyguards, and he had a security guard or policeman, and they had actually a security code. You know what I mean? So in this situation, it would be very difficult, but uh, most French businesses don't have that kind of level of security. So frankly, they're just open to... Uh, to anyone walking in, whether it's a, a former un, unhappy former employee or whether it's a terrorist, the the thing is that uh, it's got, they have no plan, no plan on how to handle an active shooter situation. Do That's we then? Do, do we need to stop being? Let's not be alarmist about this. But in light of what's happening around the world right now, and in light of the fact that there are groups out there who have no qualms whatsoever about shooting somebody in the head who's on the sidewalk, do we need to then think more about? arming businesses, making sure that there is some sort of an armed guard, if you will, an armed presence, not only yeah. here in America, but around the world in major markets and major cities. But I think we've made a concerted effort, uh, uh, the government, I'm, I'm specifically talking about the FBI because I'm former FBI, to educate the public. And I think our American public overall is much more security aware than in France. I just came back from Paris. I spent two weeks in Paris and people don't have any they, they don't have a security awareness like we have in the United States. Why don't they we have that awareness? Why do you think that's missing in Europe? Well, because because they don't carry guns. Uh, for example, I was in Paris over New Year's Eve, and in um, Champs Elysees, um, they have Christmas markets, and they had over a million people there celebrating the New Year. They had one stabbing involving two homeless individuals. And the following day, I was reading in the Figaro, which is a, a Paris newspaper, that crime is down because this year, over New Year's Eve, um, French people only burned 952 cars instead of over 1,000 last year. You know what I mean? That's the kind of crime they're dealing with. They're not dealing with active shooters like we are here in this country. Well, then, because we have the active shooters here, and it would seem that there is more of a preponderance of it, and certainly these terrorists want to come after America, are we looking at a stage right now where if you are a major business in America, you need to make sure that you are well protected, your people know about active shooters? But not only that, and again, we're not trying to throw up any sort of great fear here, but are we getting to the point where you're going to absolutely need to have armed guards at major businesses every place in America? Well, it's, 
it's more than armed guards. You have a whole security program. I get contacted on a weekly basis by corporations that have no security plan in place. And then they ask us to come in and conduct training and whatever. And once they find out how much it costs, they say, well, we'll have to think about it. You know what I mean? People always put security last, but then if something happens, got oh, you know what I mean? Then what do these companies need to do? We're talking right now to a number of people, millions of people around the country right now involved in major and minor businesses now. Because let's face it, from the convenience store on the corner to the major hotel on Madison Avenue, there is the opportunity and the, the chance that someone will walk in and just start shooting. Exactly. So it's not a matter of if, it's pretty much a matter of when. And businesses need to get prepared, just like they need to get prepared for national national disasters. They have to get prepared for man-made disasters, including terrorism or an active shooter. They need to invest the money up front. I mean, they have, I'm trained. Uh, we have a lot of security consultants that are trained to to teach them to and to set up a security program. What are we talking so, about here, though, Tanya? Are we talking about bulletproof glass? Are we talking about armed guards in front of every building? Where's the starting point? Depends. We need to conduct a security threat assessment to see who is there. One building is there. Five, are there five buildings? There one side. There are five sides in the United States. How many people they have? What is the threat level? I mean, we have to review the security program and then make recommendations. Unfortunately, this kind of service will cost between five, fifty thousand to a hundred thousand, sometimes even more. And oftentimes, businesses don't want to invest. Do you think that what we saw in Paris may lead to the potential of a template for others, maybe even copycats who now want to go after the media specifically? Well, that's a different story. And I think in a way, uh, it's, uh, as tragic as it is, this was a wake-up call because liberty, liberty and freedom of speech, freedom of expression is at, at the core of the French philosophy. And I think it really hit it hit a, a note in the French people's heart and mind, and this is why they spill out on the street in the peaceful protests and demonstrations. Unfortunately, I think it's a wake-up call. I mean, France is a uh, is very vulnerable to terrorist attacks, especially uh, with those that are returning back from Syria. They have. Uh, over 400 people that went to Syria and Iraq to fight with ISIS or whatever other Al Qaeda groups, related groups, and now they have 200 people uh, that are already back. So for France, it's not a matter of if; it's also a matter of when right now. And I think France, I'm speaking mm. uh, as a friend of the French people, they need to come up and become more security aware. And French businesses need to follow maybe the American example. They're not, you know, they're not up. On our level. There we but go. It, is, it, it, it has gotten scary, unfortunately. We're all out of time. Tanya DiGenova, thank you so much for joining us. We'll look forward to doing it again. You've given us an awful lot to think about. Midpoint continues.